Hello everyone, welcome to our session, creating an incident prevention workflow with AI ops. This is a recap of the Knowledge 24 session we did. Hi Darius, how are you? Fantastic, Good to see you again, Usman. Um, so before we dive in, I just wanna kind of do a quick preamble uh, for our listeners and just ask you a question really that, do you really know where your incidents come from? We see that 40% of incidents come from this user request, could be typical incidents, software requests, outages, and, and a lot more. But what about the other 60%? They come from actually machines, and I'm not talking about Skynet, but mostly like monitoring systems. You got a lot of monitoring systems giving you metrics, events, logs, and they create a lot of complexity. Now, the interesting thing is we see the growth happening rapidly, 10 to 20% growth, which is significant if you take into account you got six to 12 or some customers even have two dozen monitoring tools out there. So how do we really wrap our head around and really take the noise out of the system and focus on what we really want to do? So what we're going to talk about today is some forward-looking way of how to get around incident prevention and focus on more alert-based concepts. And we're gonna show you some forward-looking stuff. So just as a safe harbor there. So before I dive in, and actually Darius is going to walk you through a workflow and show you a demo, I wanna talk about what are the three things that actually keep you busy with a lot of complexity and not getting you ahead. So the first thing is, there is a lot of unplanned changes in your environment. They do cause outages. However, the, the main issue is you don't know what you don't see, and there's a lack of visibility and observability in your systems. Secondly, you got a lot of noise. Yes, you get events, metrics, logs. But what happens eventually is it leaves you to false positives, and you can't focus. And typically, you can't really get to root causes very, very fast. And then finally, lack of automation is the number one issue that keep you slow to responding issues. So a lot of times, empty DRs are slow. Uh, mean time to detect is very slow because you don't have automation. So let's talk about how do we get you out of this chaos and get you right on track. Darius, I'm going to turn it over to you to walk our listeners through step-by-step -step approach that they can use with AI ops and modern ops. Perfect, perfect. And I think it's a great landscape of three big issues that we'll see how we can solve them with some of the solutions we've been investing in from an IT operations management perspective here at ServiceNow. So how do we get it right, right? How can you make more sense of your data, get better visibility into the health of systems and automate the opportunities around remediation? So let's talk through a journey, if you will, of proactive and self-healing operations. And as we highlighted, the start of every journey of understanding how your systems and machines are operating begins with understanding data related to those machines' health. And today, you're probably getting that data from numerous different application performance monitoring, network monitoring, different monitoring and observability solutions that gives you an insight into a given service's performance. Now that's monitoring different dimensions like latency, error rate, saturation, your red signals, your golden signals, and it's generating numerous events, logs, and metrics that fundamentally at scale represent the noise we were talking about. But what we want to do and what we will see is providing you and your team on the operations side a concise and consolidated summary through alert automation that is doing time-based grouping, text and tag-based grouping, as well as CMDB and topology-based grouping to really compress and group those different events and alerts together, but also to highlight the relevant metrics and logs that occurred around the same time as those events so that you can easily get down to identifying that root cause of why did this alert storm just happen? Right. What else was going on around the same time? Was there a change that was deployed on the service? And so fundamentally, that's all context that's feeding through the system that at the end of the workflow, when the human is in the loop, they can take advantage of all that context for 
collaboration between teams for on-call response, immediately paging someone if we need to, going in and triggering automated remediation or even manual remediation that a operator can opt into and run a reboot, right? A uh, script to get troubleshooting data and fundamentally reporting to give the business high level insights on what is the actual reliability and technical performance of my services. So let's see how this actually comes together, right? This is a great workflow, but how does it actually manifest in the product and how does it deliver the three outcomes of improved service availability, improved customer satisfaction, and importantly, improved agility to deploy more innovation to your customers and employees with reduced risk. And so, yeah, well, let's talk about I mean, here, just a quick one to Darius. I think it's all important for our customers to know that actually customers are using it today, right? So customers see upwards of 90% event reduction, as you said, you know, there's a tremendous amount of 30% MTTR reduction that customers can see. So there is an actual implementation is going on. We're happy to share later as well. So Fantastic. I'm... Fantastic. Yeah. And so this is not only an art of the possible, this is a reality for a lot of our customers on how they've taken their data and they've all started in similar scenarios as many of you looking for faster time to resolve, looking for better context. And by integrating these systems and using these new applications, they've been able to do that. And so... Speaking of new applications, let's take a look at modern ops and incident prevention, utilizing the suite of capabilities we've invested in in the ITOM portfolio. And we want to start the conversation with anomaly detection. And that's going to surface in our service operations workspace, which is our UI of the future, where we're making these investments to go and provide your team the interfaces to get the data around what's going wrong. So in this case, I want to start with a, a log anomaly example, right? So we have this great health log analytics, and here we can see the volume of logs with an Oracle database is above normal. So we've had a trend of logs and we've detected a spike, right? An anomaly based on the common operating levels and procedures. And so as an agent, I can come here as an operator into the system and identify context from this alert around, well, what are these logs? What are other logs that happen around the same time? When did it happen? What is that metric data that is showing me the change over time? And what can I do to go in and say, yes, this is actually an issue so that the ML model actually gets more intelligent. So I can see here there was a 358% increase. It was a anomaly compared to past behavior around the same time for the same service. And so what I'm going to do then is try to troubleshoot and figure out why did that anomaly happen? And to do that, I'm going to utilize the alert correlation and analysis and a lot of the insights we get working in this modern express list interface alongside some of the proactive recommendations we're getting out of Now Assist, which is our Gen AI application of that new technology. And so we know there was an anomaly. The logs were spiking. But why did it happen? So as an operator, I'm immediately diving into my express list and I'm looking at all the alerts coming in specifically around the volume of logs. And I can identify and see that, hey, I've got three other alerts that are all grouped together. And if I read an alert analysis generated by now assist, I can see that there's a lot of logs, events, and specifically on this RabbitMQ related to an order status service. And I'm getting a lot of status code for weights on a on a server and the idea is it may not be three it may be 30 it may be a hundred alerts that you're ingesting in the system your operators aren't going to be able to read them all so we're going to be grouping together using that automated grouping logic what those similar alerts are and then applying that generative ai to describe what is the common commonality in that group of alerts and in this case again it was specific to anomaly related alerts for this oracle database. And if I zoom in, I can just double click on and highlight that this analysis is fully auto-generated by our generative AI technology in-house here at ServiceNow. Now, as we continue the journey, let's figure out how we can determine root cause. So we're aware there's an anomaly related to logs. We understand there's a grouping of numerous alerts, and we can understand the context of that grouping from generative AI. What is actually causing it? Why did that log count spike? And what else is going on in the system 
related to this checkout service and this given rabbit server. So next, we want to determine root cause, taking advantage of that additional context from your logs, your metrics, and your changes. And so if I come in onto one of these given alerts, I have a tab here called metrics where I can actually see for that impacted server, what is that disk-free percentage over time? What's the disk usage? Clearly, there's been a spike and then we're running low on memory. In addition to that, I can go and I can change the time frame to see if there's other patterns I want to look for throughout the day. Was this something unique to this device right now? Or is this a repetitive kind of flapping behavior that is constantly happening against the server? So the first idea is we want to give you the right metrics in context to the alert to try to identify what is going wrong with this given CI, help you get that context. In addition to that metric data that we're able to add, we can help you understand probable root causes coming through changes. And this includes DevOps changes, events that we see happening in your CI CD pipeline on maybe an application service that's running on that given server. And so the idea is we give you the visibility of the health, the performance over time when something went wrong, but also the potential changes that could be indicative of the cause, right? Of what happened in your environment that changed that now resulted in the spike of logs. And so I could see here, there was recently on an order status service, there was a DevOps task for a deploy, a prod deploy that recently happened, which could be the cause here. And so this is a fantastic product with our DevOps change and DevOps insight to understand what is going on in my pipeline and what are these pipeline events. And so as we highlight it, we get that context on what that root cause may be due to that change on that prod deploy. And if I click into that prod deploy, I can get the full context in terms of what specifically changed in the code base. What was the deploy for? Was it for a new feature? Was it for a set of quality enhancements? And so this is a fully automated change request that was generated. You know, you don't have to work with a, a big team to constantly document. We're just pulling these automatically from your CI CD pipeline and the changes that we see going through your release management. So I get that context and I can check with the teams what was the actual payload and what code changed here against this order status service. So now that I have a sense on what went wrong, I want to collaborate with my team. Right? I want to bring in the application owners, the team that pushed that recent fix and code. And so to know who to talk to, I'm going to take advantage of native on-call scheduling on the platform. I'm going to look at, hey, for this given application, who's the team that supports it? Who's on-call right now for that given team? And then importantly, I can utilize a kind of a chat ops concept to receive notifications directly on a chat channel, kick off additional communication with additional stakeholders on a chat channel, and really discuss how we're going to remediate this spike in this performance degradation on that server. And if it was impacted by that recent change that got pushed on that order service. And so while we're doing that remediation, while we're conversating with our additional team members or team collaboration, that's where the automation is going to come in that we're talking about. Structured playbook automation directly on these alerts. We just talked about the metrics for context. Well, you also get playbooks for remediation. So here you can define actions like uh, removing the log files, freeing up some memory, expanding disk space if it's a, it's a resizable asset. Uh, creating service degradations to inform your own end customers and your users. Maybe it's creating a major incident to get all hands on deck and to swarm and to create customer communications and update a status page. But fundamentally, we want to bring in contextual playbooks that help users both diagnose and remediate alerts based on the type of alert it is and the context we know about the alert. And so whether it is a human in the loop running the playbook or you just have the system take automated actions, that is up to you on your definitions. And so it brings it all together. The actions in this case, we can remove those files. And at the end of the day, we can say, did we resolve the issue? And how is this service now performing now that we did resolve the issue? And so to help the business get that answer and context on, well, how is this, this checkout service and this Oracle server performing? Is this a one-off issue or is it constantly running into issues? We need to talk to and train 
or improve the infrastructure of the underlying team. That's where we get this new concept of service reliability management and SLI SLO management. So here in the service operation workspace, as a leadership team, once all those alerts and incidents are closed, you can take a high level of view of your operating environment and say, what are those services? What is the air budget remaining on those services? Because teams that burn through their air budget, maybe you want to prevent them from doing additional changes, additional pushes to production. And so that's a great new capability where you can report on and then see your SLO performance of your services over time, whether it's availability, latency, error rate, saturation, account-based SLO, duration-based SLO. The idea is you're now prioritizing the business objective of performance against the actual technical performance. And we do this again to proactively get ahead of incidents because we want to get identification of what the culprits are in terms of low performing services to proactively invest in it to prevent the incidents from happening again. So with that, it's a lot of great context, a lot of great functionality and capabilities throughout our service operation workspace, surfacing logs, surfacing metric data, surfacing playbooks, new SLI, SLO information, and really those generative AI insights. And so I'll turn it back to you, Usman, to kind of recap what we saw and how it all comes together in our portfolio with Service Tab ITOM. Thank you, Darius. This was amazing. Um, I do want to make a couple of plugs. Of course, uh, most of the uh, products and applications you saw from Darius of Devo are generally available. And uh, the the performance, uh, service performance indicators, the SLO, SLI are becoming available in um, in August sometimes, right, Darius? So they are generally available for everyone. Uh, and so, uh, so, so, but other than that, everything else is generally available for everyone to take a, you know, uh, take action on. Now, also, I want to say that during Knowledge Twenty Four, we had multiple customer sessions that uh, acted kind of on this uh, this topic. So I remember our overall digital technologies team had a session on AI ops. And they also talked about how they're using generative AI, the now assess for ITOM. So take a look at that. Uh, we also had a session from National Grade who talked about metric intelligence, how they're using, just like um, Darius was showing you. So take a look at that as well. I uh, think about three things there. First of all is the correlation. You got a lot of noise. So think about how do you get, take alert correlation and aggregation and how Gen AI helps. Uh, that will help you tremendously reduce noise reduction. Secondly, think about how to inject more reliability and service resilience using AIOps workflow, and that will get you to self-healing. That's where also you start to think about playbook automation and you start to drive more MTT and MTTR reductions. And we have customer, other customers who are actively doing all of that. So thank you for listening to us. Thank you, Darius for giving us a demo and we look forward to talking to you, reach out to us and happy to have a discussions with you. Thank you. Thanks, Susan.